you can find the links to these images right below this video in the description. We're gonna start out with these two layers, the photo frame background and the snow border. I have them on two separate layers, of course. And what we wanna do is we wanna isolate this black area here. We can, of course, create around the frame. So I'm gonna press Z on the keyboard. I'm holding the Z key, I'm not letting go of it. And I'm gonna zoom in to the corner here and release the Z key. It'll bring me back to the pen tool, which I had selected. Make sure that you have shape on the options panel on the drop down. Click on one corner, click on the next, hold the space bar, pan down, click on the bottom right corner, and then click on the bottom left corner. I'm gonna hold the space bar again, click and drag, to pan up, and complete that path. Now the color of the shape really the zoom tool, just so we can see the image at 100%. And actually, now that I'm looking at it at 100%, I'm actually gonna right click on it and choose fit on screen so that I can see the entire composition. Then I'm going to press Ctrl J, Command J and the Mac to duplicate. So now I have two copies. I'm going to disable the one on the top by clicking on this eye icon and the one on the bottom here. I'm going to clip to the shape below it. So with that layer selected, I'm going to press Ctrl, Alt, G, Command, Option, G on the Mac. Then I'm going to enable the layer right above that. And I'm just gonna make a selection around the snow border. So I'm gonna click on the quick. Okay, now that I have the selection active around the snow border, I'm gonna select that top layer and click on the layer mask icon to create a mask around the snow border. So what I'm gonna do now is click on this top layer, hold shift and click on the layer below it so they're both selected. And I'm going to click on this little chain link icon here to link those two layers. What that allows you to do is when you move one of those layers with the move tool, it moves both. And they can be in different groups and they can be separated. So that allows us to keep those two layers together. What I'm going to do now is press Ctrl T, Command T to transform, to scale this and adjust it accordingly. If you can't. At this point, we can go back and adjust the layer mask if we need to. So I'm going to zoom in just so we can see the areas that we need to work on. So we need to work on this area and then the blue outline around her body. So we can adjust that by clicking on the layer mask in the properties panel. You can click on mask edge. If you don't see the properties panel, you can go into window, properties. With this brush select that I can click and drag here on the hair and hopefully we'll get a better selection. Now I didn't do that good of a job here. so. I'm just gonna leave it like this for now. I know I'm selecting some of the sky, but that's okay. I'm gonna get rid of that by pressing X on the keyboard, which swaps the foreground and background color. And with black, I'm gonna paint on that layer mask to get rid of the sky here. And I'm not gonna take the time to do so now. I will do that after the tutorial and you can see the final image, but I'm just going to go around the entire image and just make sure that everything is masked out accordingly. And in most of these areas, everything seems to be okay. I know we got to work on this area here. And like I said, I'll do that after I'm done with the tutorial and you can see my final result. But for now, we'll just leave it as is. I'm going to press Z on the keyboard, right click, and choose fit to screen help our composite look much more realistic and much more interesting. So from the Adobe Stock Library, I downloaded two elements we're gonna use. We're gonna use this shovel with the snow. So let me just double click on that to open that up. And by the way, the links to these files are on the description. You have to download them from Adobe Stock. They're not free, but you can use a watermark preview to practice on. So I would recommend you doing that just so that you can have a way to practice and learn so the first thing I got to do is get rid of the shovel. I'm going to click on the lasso tool. I'm going to make a selection around the shovel. And as you can see, it's not very accurate. It's okay. 
then I can hold shift and backspace or you can go into edit fill to bring up the fill menu from the ground so I'm gonna go into the channels panel and I'm gonna look for the channel that's got the most contrast in this case the blue channel I'm gonna click and drag on the blue channel and drop it here in the new channel icon to duplicate it now with the duplicate channel I can start making adjustments to it the first thing I'm gonna do is fill with white on the areas that I want to keep for sure so with the lasso tool selected I'm just gonna click and drag and make a very rough selection on the areas that I know for sure I want to keep which is all this top part here now that I have a selection active I can fill with white white is currently my foreground color to fill with the foreground color you can hold alt and backspace option backspace on the Mac then control D command D on the Mac to deselect now we gotta work on this bottom part there's a feature in Photoshop called apply image if you go into image apply image what apply image allows you to do is to take an image and apply it onto itself using a blend mode. In this case, we're taking the blue copy, applying the screen blend mode onto itself. So notice what happens here in the snow on the edge. It essentially turns white, which is what we want. You could also, of course, apply a multiply blend mode and it'll give you a different result. In this case, I think I'm going to go with screen and then I'll just work on the edges in the next step. So I'm going to press OK. And what I'm going to do now is go into Image, Adjustment, Levels, and bring the levels to the right, the dark values to the right. So we have more contrast between over to the left a little bit. I'm looking at the edges here. And maybe drag this one to the left as well. And press OK. Now, Now it's not a perfect selection but it's going to work because the color of the floor and the color of the table are very similar colors and I think we're going to be able to get away with it. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply click on the layer, select the move tool, click and drag the layer over onto the other file by hovering over the tab and then coming down and releasing and there's our file. It's a really big layer so we're going to need to scale it down. Control T, Command T in the Mac, Transform. We can't see the corner handles, so I'm going to press Control 0, Command 0 on the Mac. There's the corner handles, and now I'm going to adjust them accordingly. I'm holding Shift as I'm clicking on these corner handles to keep the file constrained. The angle is not really matching with maybe something like this. And press Enter when you're done. Now that we have this file in place, I'm going to press V on the keyboard. Right click, fit to screen. Then I'm going to press V on the keyboard to get the move tool and maybe I can move it around if I need to. And I'm going to click on the new group icon to create a new group. I'm going to click and drag this snow layer in there. I'm going to collapse it and now it's in that group. Next I'm going to hold Alt, Option on the Mac and click on the layer mask icon to create a black layer mask which hides everything. Then with the brush tool I can paint with white on this layer mask to start revealing some of that snow. So I'm going to use a bracket piece in the keyboard as I work to increase and decrease the size of my brush. So I'm just painting with white, just bringing in some of that snow. And if you make a mistake, you can press X on the keyboard to paint with black.